What's going on, smart people? I, I didn't really expect to make this kind of video this soon. Uh, as you guys all know, I very recently finally finished my application for the PhD program at NMSU. I finished most of it weeks ago, but I was still waiting on like final grade stuff, and as you probably saw in the last video, sorry, I have a cold, by the way. Uh, in the last video, I finally got my final grades and I could submit my application, and I thought that there would be kind of like a I don't know, a couple weeks buffer in between that and hearing back from admission stuff. I was kind of planning on, because as someone who is as is a uh, very well experienced with these kinds of letters, uh, they typically have like a different subject line and like an email, then you can kind of mentally prepare yourself. It wasn't like that this time, uh, but I mean sometimes they like don't say anything at all, and you're just left to guess. So I guess it's better than nothing. But this was just uh, kind of a reply to admissions related things that was within like an email thread itself, like an email chain itself. So it wasn't something separate, basically just replying to one of my emails. I'm kind of rambling at this point. Let's just, let's just go over the email real quick because I'm sure a lot of you might have no experience with this kind of thing. So let's just go into it. Let's just jump right into it. Dear Andrew, uh, thank you for your application to the PhD program. We've had a large number of applicants this semester, and unfortunately, we regret to inform you that we were unable to reject your application. You gonna be a doctor! I am a PhD student now. I'm not a fake grad student. I'm sorry, by the way, if that tricked you. I had to do it. It was kind of hilarious. It's kind of your fault if you were tricked, because as we have all seen in my previous videos, I'm a terrible actor. Why would you fall for that? I guess in your defense, if you fell for it, I, it, it's sort of understandable because I've had plenty of experience with rejection letters, so I know how they sound. They're always like, We had all of our fine applicants. We couldn't accept them all. And naturally, you're the one we're not gonna let in, Andrew. Screw you. So you're let off the hook this time. Let's read the actual letter itself. So it says, well, first off, for, for context, I sent an email with my final grades as soon as I could. And I said, thank you for the quick action and sending a copy of your transcript. Uh, but we've already had feedback from your instructors, so they already made up their mind before getting my final grades, I guess. Uh, we are happy to offer you admission with financial support as a 20-hour teaching assistant starting in January. So when you get into your PhD programs, really there's, there's two ways of getting in. You can get in as a teaching assistant or as a research assistant. The research assistant is much more rare, so teaching assistant is almost... It's almost the custom, it's it's pretty much expected that that's what you'll do. So the 20 hour means, I'm assuming that means 20 hours a week working as a TA. So, you know, conducting the labs for the little kids and all that good stuff. Uh, and then they said that they'll come back with more of the logistics, but they just wanted to let me know all this stuff now. So, yeah, I'm gonna be, I'm not gonna be, I am now a PhD student. All I have to do is make sure to pass the qualifiers that is in, uh, a month. All grad students have to take the qualifier. I should, I should, uh, all masters or PhD students have to take the qualifying exam. And then I think you can qualify at the PhD or the master's level. Uh, I wasn't going for my master's in the first place when I was taking classes last semester. I was straight up non-degree seeking. I was just paying to take classes at NMSU. So I moved, you know, the 2,000 miles across the country. Uh, to take classes at a place I didn't get into just to better my chances because I said well You know if I do well at their own school in their graduate program That'll be a really good indicator on if I can handle grad school. That was my thought process uh, And I guess it paid off so that's that's pretty good news So all grad students have to take that qualifying exam. It's on classical mechanics quantum statistical physics and electrodynamics and then there's also a comprehensive exam that is exclusive for PhD students. I don't know enough about it. I have no idea when it is. It's not January 19th though, because that's the qualifying exam. It's an eight hour test. I really need to start preparing for that. I think within this next week, I'm going to start studying probably more statistical mechanics just because I haven't looked at it since undergrad. Um, so that's, that's probably what needs the biggest refresher right now. Sorry, that was kind of a tangent, but it, it's kind of funny because I was here eating lunch yesterday with my sister and my mom. That's when I actually found out about this stuff uh, because we were just talking and I got an email from the grad school and I thought it was just going to be a confirmation of, you know, they got my final grades or something. And here I got the news. I was like, 
I found out something. <laughs> I get to tell, like, I found out with them, which was cool. And that's that's what's kind of cool about the holiday season is, you know, even if it was the bad news, at least I would have been with my family, which is nice. But it was good, and there was, you know, it seems like everyone had good news because Kelly did fantastic in her classes this semester. Uh, so I'm super proud of her. It's her birthday today. So everyone say happy birthday to Kelly or I'll take away your calculators. My buddy Cully just got accepted into his OCS program, which we found out on the same day that I got into the PhD program. So we both found out yesterday. So huge congratulations to him. It's just a good time. I feel I feel a little bit bad though. We called my grandmother to give her the good news and my mom goes, hey, hey, uh, Drew has some good news for you. And I was like, I'm having a baby. And then there was just, Silence. I was like, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I got into grad school and I was like, oh my god. <laughs> so sorry, my mom. But, anyways, I consider myself a pretty private person. I know I make videos every single day, so that's kind of ironic. But I'm really glad to have been able to share this kind of thing on this platform. It's like this is the one little community or corner of YouTube that's not toxic. Well, actually, that's not true. A lot of the people in this kind of realm of the sciencey videos. All the comments are super, some of you guys are just memesters, some of you are just super supportive or just ask great questions, but it's never people being mean, which I I really appreciate that those kinds of people. What's really cool is I am very against censorship, so I go out of my way to make sure if someone's being ignorant, I think that they have every right to be an idiot, that's fine, I'm not going to censor what they say, and I never even have to do that on this channel. That's something that I'm super thankful for also. Let me know in the comments section if you could choose between being a TA your first semester of grad school or a research assistant, which would you be? And choose carefully because doing research on top of taking classes would probably be pretty demanding your first semester of grad school. But let me know in the comments section what you choose, and I'll see you guys there.